morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the hot day stream. Hey, DJ Natty, hey, Panzer Ken. James, Monkey Butler Labs, Bob. Hey, Bill. Hey, Lars. Hey, Joker Nut. Hey, Melting. How is everyone doing? Hey, Jorg. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, Colin. Hey, Nathan. Christian. KB3D. Hello. Hey, Delmar. Hey, Poity. We are continuing the solid fork build today with the air conditioning on full blast. <laughs> Hey, Linus. Hey, Chris. Hey, Danny. <laughs> I think it's going to end up, well, for the most part, going to become tradition to get Charlie Pets um, in at the beginning of stream. So. Hey, TCS. Eddie, welcome. I haven't seen you out here in a while. I'm glad you're here. Toast. Good evening, Steve and Charlie, for five months. That's awesome. Thank you. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Dunes. Hey, Steve. B. McNichol. Hello, and Boron Noob. So, we had all kinds of camera problems last time. I'm hoping I've mitigated that. At the very least, I put the main camera here with the microphone on my CamLink 4K, the USB capture card. So, that's been reliable. So let's hope that if we do have any timeouts, it'll be the other cameras and it won't be a big deal. There were a couple of factors that were causing that. As many people in chat said, I had forgotten to change the temperature setting on the camera. I think that was the biggest factor. However, in my further testing, it still times out sometimes. And I think it's a setting on the capture card that I haven't figured out. So. Hey, Stuart. Hey, Ivan. Hey, Grant. Kashmir. So. We are expected to hit 106 today and 113 on, uh, what is it, tomorrow or Tuesday? That's 45C. Okay, bye, Charlie. <laughs> phone check. Phone phone is on, is over here. It's, it's right here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Squirrel Brain. Hey, Yuri. Hey, Thomas. Okay. So we are going to make more progress on the ooh and get some of this cat hair off of the off of the salad fork. We are going to make pr more progress on the salad fork. I have made a couple of very small um, off camera changes. Yuri designed a new a stepper mount. Um, and it'll be hard to see here, I think, but. Do, 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 maybe top cam. Yeah, I think it's going to be too hard to see. Well, there we go. You see where the wire comes out there between the frame and the stepper? You put a wire path there, which is very nice. Good job. And first letting Charlie out. <laughs> okay. April got it. Um, let's see. Hey, Victor. Hey, Kelvin. Some technical issue kind of pales to what you're actually doing if you think about it. Stream setup like that would have been blown broadcast producers away two years ago. Yeah. Hey, Yuan. Only watching one stream today. <sighs> okay, yes, we, we begin the Charlie Door game. So that swapped out. Figured that wasn't worth going through all the time to redo the bearings and swap that piece out. It didn't take too long. And, um,. I also modified the 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 bottom skirt, and you can't really see right here. All right, here I, I made some notches for some wires to pass through there. So, and check this out. I mean, it's not V zero size, but being able to just flip it around like that is kind of nice. <laughs> We will get the Charlie cam when he's there. See, there's a Charlie cam, but he's not there. <laughs> Hopefully we don't see much of this. Hopefully we won't see much of that. It mutes it when I put that up, so I forgot. 
<laughs> C build 45C. We're hiring, hitting 10C at 6 a.m. and 20 at noon. Yeah. Hey, Art from Texas. <laughs> Patrick, thanks for gifting the memberships. Don't start like that. I'm getting it out of the way. I figure you're not going to have an opportunity to see the magnificence of RCF dancing for the rest of the stream. So get it out of the way. <laughs> Hi, Tiger. Gary, member for five months. Thank you. Oh, and Charlie's being let back in. Unfortunately, there's someone there to do that. Oh, Derek is in the air. Nice. Hey, Thomas. Already this many months. Yeah. Okay. Gunnar, thanks for becoming a member. Awesome. We have documentation. Patrick is volunteering to be the test to see if gifting is working for you. Was borked for Nero. I heard something about that. It sounds like YouTube's playing with stuff. So... Meanwhile, see no gifted memberships being issued because everyone is already a member. Yeah, it, it, in the past few streams, they have tr trickled in later in the streams, too. So I don't know what's going on. I hope that's a cold brew coffee. No, it's actually hot, but I have the air conditioning blowing right on me. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable right now. Yeah, I, I, I apologize, anybody. I, I have no no idea what's going on with the YouTube membership stuff. Hopefully, they sort it out. It 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 appears that real memberships, not real, that's the wrong word, but um, individual memberships are working. Just saying. Um, looking for tips. Going to print some TPU for the first time. Slow. Special, oh, printing Ninja Tech Cheetah. Cheetah's a much more higher durometer TPU, isn't it? That might not be too bad. TPU has a huge range of, um, of that. Oh, there we go. Just for you. Yeah, Solid Fork is looking good. So let's get into it. Self-source memberships. There we go. That's a good... That's a good term. We have a GitHub. Oh, um, there. Just so you don't miss out. So let's go to the documentation. Back to the documentation to figure out where we left off. <laughs> so, so, so at some point, are we going to get kit memberships via self versus self sourced? We were on, I think we're at the gantry because we did the X, Y motion, which was all of this. And I think we completed it. So I'm going to just scroll through here real quick. LDO kit memberships. <laughs> Let's see. We did all of this. We did the front idlers. It appears we did, and then we did that. Yeah, we finished off this step. So let's go on to the gantry. They should do membership packages. That would be awesome. Get some collabs between channels, do membership packages. <laughs> so all the, the big draw for channel memberships is the members only streams every month, but I've been making those public after a month when the next one comes out. So nobody's missing out. Um, you just get a little delayed on that. So there's no pressure. This is just fun. The memberships is just another level of uh, community interaction. No worries.
So we're going to go on to the gantry. Prepare the x-axis extrusion. And where did I put that? Got the x-axis extrusion. I've been leaning so hard on your archives. Nero's when building in progress 2.4. Awesome, Christian. Linus, thanks for being a member for four months. Um, we need an, oh, an X-Rail. Oh, we got another, another rail. Get all this stuff out and prepared. Hi, Pied. Memberships, direct or indirect, to support your guys' streams. YouTube needs to fix them. So no, there's real, yes, they do need to fix it. I just, my my whole thing is, this is fun. It's, uh, it, it is a big deal for um, YouTube to fix that. I'm not gonna stress about it though. Hi, Kenneth. Okay, so we're gonna need this. We're gonna need some printed parts and Using six M3 nuts, add the MGN-9C rail to extrusion D, leaving about 15 millimeters from the end. So I assume we're just gonna center it. Is there a limitation on getting more than one gifted membership? I don't think so. I think your previous one just has to have expired. Hey, Craig. Okay, so we're gonna put the rail on first. I guess this is probably the best view, so. Hi, Par. Thanks for streams. You're in Nero Streams. Help me build my 2.4. And this solid fork build series is going to help me when my kit comes in. Awesome. Hey, Mr. Jada D. <laughs> um, we are needing some square nuts. And some M3 by 8s. Hey, Zart. Welcome from Switzerland. Yeah, I think YouTube has got to get their act together with that. One, two, three, four. How many do I want? I want one, two, three, four, five. Why don't we just go all, all nine? Three, four, yeah, all nine. Let's just do all nine on this. Short rail. Four, one, two. I have to get more of these square nuts. Three, four. Do you think you'll get to the electronics this stream? I'm not sure. So my, my hope is to get to starting to wire it and then do a whole stream that's basically dedicated to configuring and getting it going. So I don't know how long that's going to take, where that's going to get us. I think that's a, probably a good, a good plan to try that. I think I put way too many of these in. Line all of these up. Oh, I hope I have a, oh boy. I'm not 100% sure I have the right rail guide for this. Did I print those? I forgot that this is an MGN-9. Hey, Sanity, welcome. Hey, Battalion. Um, I do not think I printed the guides for um, to line up this rail. So let's check. Let's see if those are out here. Why didn't I print those? Oh, let's go up here. Let's go to, oh, where'd Char oh, Charlie's being contrary is what he's doing.
he's laying on the other side of the camera now. <laughs> he knows. He knows. <laughs> oh, I want to go here. <laughs> I set up a camera and everything. I go through all this effort and he has to spoil it. Uh, anybody know if Modbot has scheduled screens? I believe Wednesday at noon Pacific. Wednesdays at noon Pacific. Daniel is awesome. Um, I met him at Murph. I've communicated with him a little bit. He's the one that sent me the laser engraver. Which may, we may have a little bit of content here today on. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Thank you, Charlie. Just popped in and say hello, all entertaining family, so I'll have time to watch later. Thanks, Brent. Okay, we need to go back here. We need to go back to the Solid Fork repo. There we go. Charlie listened. Let's go to the STLs and tools and the MGN9 rail guide. Okay, so way quicker for me to do this on the other computer. Uh, so let me get things kind of sorted. Now I need a 360 cam. Do I have a three millimeter spacer lay on its side and put it under the rail? Yeah, I, I'll print this. This won't take very long. Let me just grab some. Some filament that I've. Let's do this. This won't take long. Troy, $10, too bad we can't make donations that also help others in the community. That was the nicest thing I thought about gifted memberships is it's the same 70%. It just gives, it helps someone else too. Okay. We have plenty of other things we can get going while this takes its 20 minutes or so to print. Preloading nuts and rails makes me retract some of the grumblings over roll-in T-nuts. Yeah. Wednesdays in the Modbot channel where he tries to drop a video every Saturday. That's right. Saturdays for regular videos streaming on Wednesdays. So let me preheat this and get it set to load the filament. Are the rail guides precise enough or can the rail still be off causing problems later on? For the, um, for the most part, they're precise enough. In general, you want to make sure that they are, if there's any slop in there, that you're even. I mean, it's like if, if, if this, oh, well, that's not fun. I don't know what happened there. That's that's an odd failure. Let's see if it comes back. There we go. Let's see if it does it again when I do this. Okay. So this is exaggerated because this is an MGN um, or a, a 2020 extrusion piece. But if it's if it's loose in this direction as you're as you're um, setting this up, you know. You just want to make sure that they're pushed in the same direction on them. And then I usually will kind of slide it across the, the rail to make sure it's not sticking anywhere. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. That was that was an odd failure. I haven't had something like that. 
but I might have, I'm not sure about the cable here. I might have touched the cable. It's not the same problem. Okay, we are preheating. We thought the problem with TPU is retraction, not speed. Look forward to you sharing your experience later. Crits, there we go. Uh, okay, this is up there, so let me hit my load filament macro and then make sure it is catching. That's doing that. Hey Steve, got a deal on a barely used and or barely used Ender 3 Pro. And it came with a mini E3 V2, a TFT5, a Raspberry Pi, Pi Cam, an all metal hot end twin fan, all for 110 pounds. Switch wire conversion. That's a perfect candidate for a switch wire conversion. Okay, is that. Okay, I think we're good there. So I'm not going to worry about purging or anything. Let's put this back to. ABS and let's give it just a second. I there's always something to forget, right? Okay. Yeah, I've never printed these before. I've never had to use them before. This is the first this is the first MGN9 I'm putting on a 1515. So It is important to make sure that this rail because this is your reference point right the rail is not the extrusion but you want to make sure that the rail is parallel to the to the extrusion yeah that price is really good considering all of that even if the printer doesn't work Okay, um, what do I want to do here? I need to slice this over here, download it and slice it. Let me find... Download... Download and then slice. I need two of these. Sending it to the blue V0. Slice says only 15 minutes, which means it'll probably take about 13. Okay. That is sliced and sent to the printer. So, where is Dancing RCF? Right there. <sighs> okay. That is good enough. We are going to send the print. Jobs and print. Okay, now we can move on. Let me get the screws in here. Hey, Dark Neutrino. Welcome. What else is going on? Orange County Maker Fair. I know there's a, the same weekend that where, Eddie, are you still around? There's a, 
Louisville Maker Fair? Is that Louisiana Maker Fair? Where, where was that? Bernie Neutrino, member for three months. N plus one more. Thank you. Louisiana, Mary? I'm sorry. I'm, I thought it was somewhere around there. It was somewhere close that um, a couple other members of the team are going to. So there's there's a couple of maker fairs going on this weekend around the country that, um, and one of them in Eddie's neck of the woods is going to be um, attended by a couple of the the Voron mem team members. I don't remember where they said it was though. Okay, so those are in, and uh, we. Hmm. I'm going to have to be careful with that. Make sure it doesn't fall off the end. Have I been using the Switchwire Converted Ender 3? How's it printing? Not yet. Um, this week, I am um, doing projects around the house. So one of the plans is to finish up that and finish up the video on that. So hopefully I can get to it. That is printing. Awesome. Hi, John. Oh, there goes Charlie. Turn that off. Use John's magnet trick. Ooh, that's a good idea. There we go. That'll give some some level of protection. Sure. Couple of magnets on there. Perfect. Good idea. How's my son at editing? Uh, well, he, he he seems to be willing to try, but I, I, I we'll see. <laughs> oh, thank you, Louisville Maker Fair on September 10th. Yep, and the uh, OC Maker Fair is on September 10th as well. So we'll both be at Maker Fairs, just in di different sides of the country. Oh, let me let Charlie out. Two minute timer set. Hey, 007. Hey, NH3D. So, okay. Um, while that's printing, let's get back to the instructions. Okay, assemble the left XY joint. So we need a bunch of printed parts. These, I think those for right now. Clean these up a little bit. any mating surfaces. My prints aren't perfect, but this helps. Now you'd want to make sure that there are any features that stick up that you'd accidentally file off, but I don't, it didn't appear that there are on these. Just the flat surfaces that are going to meet up against something else. That one does have it, so that'll be okay right here, though. It's a... Uh, oh, which camera? <laughs> there, you can see the, the raised surface there. The mating surfaces, thank you. That'll be fine. Killer prints. It has been three months. Do you use steppers as they are, or do you adjust V-Ref? Um, we adjust, mo everything I've been using, um, we adjust the 
current output to them via the TMC settings in the config, but we don't, I don't do any other adjustments. I use them as they are. Let's see here. There are a couple of heat set inserts and then some bearing stacks. Heat set inserts. One, two, three, I think we're going to need four total. Derek, three months member for two months in a row. <laughs> you know, YouTube doesn't calculate any of those right. I think it tells me that I've been a member of Nero Stream for 20 months, but I don't think it's been that long. It's been close, but I don't think their, their math is correct for those. It's interesting. No, oh, there's Charlie. Was it two minutes? Because there's Charlie. Yeah. Let's see. Is he gonna? Is he gonna go straight there? <laughs> hey, Jose. Hey, three DP mash, mamish. In the Bay Area, I can print ABS in an open printer today. Yeah. It's, a, it'll, it's supposed to be 45 here tomorrow or Tuesday. 45C. Okay. What do I want to? There's that, that. Switch the glasses. Put a couple of heat sets in here. So this today is the first stream of my of starting my second year of streaming. September 1st was the one year when he wants out again. What do you want, Charlie? That was odd. He's been he's been a character this morning. Okay, bearing stacks. Which one do I want to start with? Right here, it looks like. We're going to need M two M3 by 35s and two M3 by 25s and a bunch of bearings. So using two M3 by 25s, and these are button heads. Maybe something like this. There we go. And three by twenty five. That's those. So two of those. We need some bearings and some washers. So I have the the beginnings of a plan to do a little bit of a celebratory stream. Um, but I'm not sure when yet. So probably early to mid October. And there's Charlie. What what can I do for you, Charlie? 
you obviously need something that I'm not giving you. <laughs> hey, Vince, well. Okay, let's go with this view, probably. Maybe, maybe this view. We're going to start here. We've got a bearing stack. See if we can. Okay. So we need washers. A washer. Two bearings and a washer. And then the other bearing stack goes here. The same thing. Second washer. Okay. And I put on the washers, these are stamped. Um, I tend to put the the sharp side away from the bearing, the rounded over side towards the bearing. Now, which one is this? Is this? Nope. It's this one. Ah. No, oh, it's got to be this one. Isn't that, does that thread into plastic there? Is that what's going on? Yeah, it must. No, what am I doing wrong here? Do I have two of the same piece? No, those are different. <laughs> I'm trying to line up how this goes, but it's not. There we go. I'm just playing mind games with myself. Let's see if this will work. Oh, nope. Not enough torque to... Not enough torque. Aren't I missing a spacer? What spacer am I missing? missing a spacer. Now I have I have a spacer on each side, one on each side of each bearing stack. Oh, oh, there we go. Um, got to go. See you, Nathan. Thanks for being here. Sorry, the part is different to what I expected. Yeah, that's OK. Threading into plastic for these, so a little too much, too much for my. Um, too much for the the ES15. OK, so those are there. What brand handles do you have for your Allens? I like them. Um, this these are MIP Thorpe. These are from my RC car days I bought. Um, it says. Oops. MIPonline.com. Okay, and then and then the M3 by 35. Is that these guys or do I have to go to another bin? Those are 30s, so the next bin.
these I can use this. Am I low on battery? Oh, I am low on battery. Forgot to charge it. Yeah, it is low on battery. Show of hands, how many of you bought a tool because of Steve? <laughs> okay, so that's one of those put together. Let's do the other one. I think it's the same basic idea. Bearing stack. And two. Make sure these are all clean. For some reason I had some dirty bearings. Like they were in with debris, not used. And then there. Yeah, and I'm using my USB able to um, power the GoPro. So so we got a choice. ES15 or Charlie Cam. That's the choice right now. I, I think that's an easy, that's not even a choice, right? <laughs> okay, so then that should go. That seems odd. Whoa. There we go. I like that. Oh, print's done. Really, if I if if I take a moment, I can probably find a USB cable to charge the ES15. It was just more fun to give the impossible choice. Bought Reamers, but they got lost in customs. That's a bummer. Okay, so these cute little XY joints are done. Look at that. Now we can pull this back. That dark blue, big fat, that is uh, Prusament Sapphire ASA. There's no such thing as a bad tool, only the tool you haven't used yet. Correct. Um, where can I plug this in? What is this? Oh, that's that one. Um... Yes, 15, getting the charge. Found a cable, found a port. Now it's charging. And... V0 to the rescue. With... Some alignment jigs. And those... Pretty tight, but I'm going to push these over to one side just barely. And then we are going to check the width here. With the glasses. So it said, says it should be about 15 millimeters. It is just over. It's just over, okay. Let's 
right there should be about right. Okay, well, that's a bummer. Let me see. I, th I think I probably missed something here. Um, M3 by 8's bottom out in the in the extrusions. So I'm guessing it actually told me to do M3 by 6 button heads. And I didn't pay attention. Yep. It said M3 by 6 and I didn't pay attention. So let me swap these out. Let me see. That was my fault. I should have known. I should have known. Let me swap these out. Yep. Um, what is going on? Is that an M3 by eight that was in the package instead? Yes, I was one that, that bottomed out too and it was M3 by eight that found its way into my M3 by six compartment. There we go. Where are we at? I'm missing anything. Missing stuff in chat. Hey, Rod. Just correct my mistake here. get a truller tape measure what's that okay almost done One more. Back to, let's loosen all these up so we can center this. There we go. Back to it. 15 millimeters, they say. that and let's see where we're at on the other side exactly 15 so we're good so let's put the guides on let's get these magnets out of the way because they keep grabbing my screwdriver side out
hurt. Snug them all down. Okay. Please post a link to the hexagon screw organizer. I can do that. Easier to find than it used to be. We go to printables. And a real quick search of less than hex. Bring it right up. Less than hexagon parts tray because it's a remix of the thin hexagon part tray, and I thought it was too thin. So now it's less thin. There you go. Okay, prepare the x-axis. So we've got back there, that is done. Oops. I should try to scroll on the screen and not on the OBS screen. We would put the heat sets in, we built our idler stacks, we put these together. Oh, those were supposed to be socket head cap screws. Do I have M3 by 35 socket head cap screws? I don't know if I do. They'll look better to be socket heads. That's 30. That's 30. That seems to be in the wrong, wrong bin. Thicker, less than, hey, there's 35. Okay, I will, I will replace these. One, two, three, and one more. Okay. Let's replace these. I need to get out here in camera view. These look better. They're they're flush with the top of the part, so I feel those plastic wall-mounted parts folders, and I'm looking forward to printing the separate for the trays. The same Acro Mills or a different brand? Such a good use of 3D printing, right? Just little things like that. Practical, practical prints. Can you figure out the camera issues from the last stream? Um, some of them, but I don't think they're gone. I don't think they're gone, but I'm hoping that it won't be an issue because I put the main camera here on a different input that I've been using for the last nine months. So I did that with, I know this works great, yep. There we go. So swapping those out. Let's put these back where they came from, which is there. <sighs> Solid fork with side pack. <laughs> okay. So back here. So swap those out for the proper screws and assemble. And then we're gonna attach. So what are we doing for pre-inserting? Use two M2, two M3 by eight and two M3 nuts to attach to extrusion through the top. Use one from the bottom and repeat for the right. And then we're gonna attach it with M2 by 12s to the carriages. And I don't think anything else attaches to the X extrusion. So I don't need to worry about pre pre-inserting anything, right? And 
this goes on the front. Okay. So I've got the MGN 9C, and that goes to the front, similar to on a on a V2 or Trident. Then this goes on this side. And we'll probably want to loosen these screws just to make it easier to get on. We can loosen all of these and then we can tighten everything down. Okay, so we're gonna grab two square nuts for the top, one for the bottom, two for the top on the other side, one for the bottom. So top, top, bottom. And in three by eight. Three by eight. There we go. <laughs> and three by eight doesn't quite easily grab the. But these might I might have I might be using the thin the Prusa style. Um, the Prusa style um, square nuts, which are thinner than typical. And what is on the bottom? M, M3 by 20. And it's probably this one. Yep. And is that a M3 by 20 socket head? I almost did it again. Almost did it again. Let me grab M3 by 20 socket head. Two of them. Oops. It's hard to line these up. And since I'm using maker beam extrusions, I can't use the little spacers. There we go, there's one. Ah. Hey Steve, what is your go-to squaring tool for the frame? Well, a nice flat surface and then I end up using just regular hardware store clamps and and then some sort of reference square. I ended up buying these just aluminum square pieces on um, on Amazon. So I'll use these as a flat surface. Uh, I don't necessarily use it for the square. It's more as a reference flat surface and then check everything with a machinist square. generally what I do. <clears throat> okay, loosen these. Just a little bit. And then two on the top, one on the bottom.
Where'd the where'd the one on the bottom go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Okay, so there is our X. So I, I want to make sure all of these are just a little loose so we can bolt this into the, onto the, the rest of the assembly and have it be the correct width. Let me get all of this out of the way. I think I'm done with the bearings. And those to there. And the printer back. I should turn this upside down. This goes to the front. It should go right like that. Now we need M2. M2 by 12. What are they? Socket head cap screws. M2 by 12s. Got these? Yep. I need eight of these. Four. Eight. And what driver do these use? <sighs> So still keeping things kind of not tight yet. Get everything together and then tighten stuff up. The right angle squares, the aluminum ones or the steel machinist squares? Okay, and then we're just going to make sure that this all stretches. That's why we left the, the screws holding the XY joints to this extrusion loose so it can slide apart if it needs to to hit the, um, the Y extrusion mounts, screw holes. Oops, that was not a 12 millimeter. Nope, it was a 10. <laughs> Where does that go? That's gonna go there. Pro tip, if you're not keen on buying the aluminum squares, you can do about the same with square or spare extrusion. Oh yeah, for just a reference surface, that would work just fine. Okay, so let's see how this moves. This moves fine. This is moving good. So I'm gonna just kind of get it into the spot to where it hits the ends of some reference surface. I'm gonna use the stops, these, these stops that we bolted in as the reference surface on the front. They're pushed all the way up against the end of the um, of the rail and the rails are all spaced correctly as we measured when we assembled. So I'm going to use that as my reference point. So that's going to go there. And then I'm going to look from the back and see that where the extrusion is centered across the, 
the centered between the XY joints only because now I can go ahead and tighten all of these screws and I'm just doing evenly just a little bit and then I'll tighten them the rest of the way. Hey, CJ. And then I had loosened the bearing stack screws just to give myself some more space. still touch at the same time. So then I'll tighten the Y carriage screws. Oh, there's Charlie wanting out again. This number seven. <laughs> cool. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yep, and that touches at the same time. It's staying there. We won't even try to make that touch at the same time on the rear because on this side, the um, the Y end stop touches first and there's a gap over here. So we won't, we won't force it back here. So that's why we're using the front as a reference here. Okay, where are we at? Okay, so we did that. Make sure the movement is smooth, and it is smooth. There's no grind or grittiness from the rails. These are the Honey Badger rails, so they are the high preload. So it is, um, there is some resistance, but I'm not feeling any um, like extra grind from the balls being in the bearings being um, being stressed. Okay, the section is done. So that was the gantry. So now we move on to the bed. Okay. Prepare the bed. We're gonna use three M4 knurled nuts and three M3 by 16 socket head screws. But we first need to actually prepare the bed. We haven't done that. So let's see what we have. We have a magnet. And this is the Graviflex. Um, what's the other name for that? There's another name. This is the this is the good stuff. I have a V0 bed that Fabrico had sent me. They were having fun. I think I've shown this before. They were having fun with their um, laser. And this is a little Charlie logo. Now, unfortunately, in this build, it's going to be pointing to the back, but I'm still going to use it because I don't have anywhere else to use it. Um, and then the bottom has a logo, but. <laughs> so, bed. I mean, I, I don't have a better, nicely machined 120 millimeter surface. So this is gonna be great. And they had also sent me one of the edge-to-edge -edge V0 heaters. Now, similarly, 
this means that the the wires are going to be coming out the front so i'm going to cut this um, sheath off pretty close so i can bend the wires back a bit so this this just makes it harder and more bulky to bend back you see that so i'm going to cut this um, covering back really close and i'm going to be using wagos on the on the bed mount anyway if the printed mod that i found last night works well <laughs> so let's get all this prepared charlie is always in the back keeping me on my toes yeah Hmm. Speaking of Charlie, he's not there. <laughs> this, this, that. For this whole assembly, I am going to take the bed frame just completely off the printer. Because I think it'll be easier to do that. Could you put felt feet on the corners and use it for a cup coaster? Absolutely. But part of the whole thing with this build is as much as I could, I grabbed stuff off the shelf that I've had, like the extrusions is the big one, is grabbing off the shelf. Anything I could, I did. So this is in that same, same thing. So we're just going to take one of the nice, nice things about Trident and, and this it, as, a, it, as part of that is how easy it is to pull the bed assembly out. Just three screws and the whole thing comes out. Once it's assembled, it's three screws and a couple of connectors. So let's pull these out and now we can just work on this and we can actually set the, the printer aside. Okay, so let's do some planning here. I am going to use this little Wago two two position Wago mount that I downloaded. And we're going to use a I think we're going to use a sex bolt. I've never done the sex bolt end stop before. But this is the solid fork version. Why not mount sideways? So the reason I can't mount it sideways is because this is an edge to edge um, heater, which means if we put this under here. You see that there is not room. It, it's got specific cutouts for the fasteners. So I'm going to have to put that right like that um, in order to fit correctly, which forces it to go to the front. Um, if I try to go to the side, then I end up covering those mounting holes. So. <sighs> I love my 2.4 ever. I can understand the charm of the Trident. Next time, I would prefer a Trident over a 2.4 and a 250. Exactly. I, I am very much a fan of both the 2.4 and and obviously the Trident. Um, I like having both printers. Are running the belts going to be tricky? Always. <laughs> Where do I get my Wagos? Um, I buy a, a variety pack off of Amazon. Let me see, it's this pack is usually what I buy. And it has a bunch of different, we're going to be using two of these right here. As far as I can tell, they're genuine. Do I cut my own extrusions? For this, I did cut my own extrusions. I had bought one meter 1515 maker beam extrusions for my original V0 build when we um, severely hugged maker beam and they didn't have any more pre-cut stuff. So I figured I'd do it. And then I ended up with an LDO frame instead. 
So we are going to have this on the side here, just like I do on my Trident, and then this over here, which means I'm gonna want to pre-insert a few more square nuts that we didn't put in this before. And that might be something now the, the now you don't need to pre-insert them for the for the end, Z end stop, so that's not important. What is important though is that this does not come close to fitting. That doesn't come close to fitting in the extrusion. Does that fit in a in an LDO extrusion? No. You might want to tweak that, Yuri. That doesn't that doesn't fit. You see that? Gonna try a Tridex when Eddie buttons up his design. Absolutely, that has been on the plan forever. Um, I have stuff. I have um, uh, the orange. My, can we see it here? Oh, you can barely see it. The orange Trident here is gonna be a uh, be a Tridex, an Eddie edition Tridex. So that is absolutely very much looking forward to that project. Um, probably later this year or very early next year. How are you fixing the thermal fuse? I wasn't going to use a thermal fuse. It's a low wattage, only 60 watt DC um, supply. I wasn't gonna use a thermal fuse on this. It is a good idea to use one. And there are spots in here that it could be fixed to, or it could be um, silicone directly to the heater. I was not planning on using one for this because it is only 60 watts. It is DC. There is not the danger of sending 120 volts straight to the heater. Hey, pushing plastics. Yeah, I think this is a little, but a file. We'll, we'll be able to do that with a file. So what I do need, oh, I can fit it through here so I don't have to undo anything. I need to put a couple of, put a couple of square nuts. Um, yeah, square nuts will do. Couple of square nuts on this side for the Wago mount. There we go. So this mount I downloaded from the Voron users repository. I have not test fit it. I'm hoping it works. But just for uh, good attribution, on user mods GitHub, if we go out to the Voron users GitHub and go to printer mods, and all I did is search for Wago and it was V0 power, not the DFH ones. Mounts for Wago to screw or clip in on 15. So Blue Bears, clippable Wago 221 mounts is what I used. And I used the screw mount version. So that's this. And I took it, I took the step file into Fusion 360 and I just cut out the center um, one to make it a two by two instead of a, a three by two. So let's see, just in case, there's the ones. Uh, Poity, yeah, this is a Fabrico. Um, Hector had made the, 
had made the plate for me with the with the nice Charlie and Steve build engraving. And then they had sent me the full coverage silicone heater to check out. Okay. These guys should go in here and those do snap in there nicely. So good job. Um, who is this? Blue Bear. <laughs> That's gonna go there. And then this goes here. So I want this with a couple of M three by sixes, I'm hoping. Oh, and there's Charlie. That was a little longer than usual. Actually, I want to put this in upside down. I lost the screw. Uh, Trident was a great release to segue into the Tridex. Oh, yeah. I am very much, I'm not so much looking forward to calibrating and configuring the Trident or the Tridex, but I am very much looking forward to that build. Okay, so that is the way goes on there. And this is just so I can have a quick release for the bed. Hey, P3. Okay, we are going to need to do some work on this. So let's just do that and that and alternate sides until it fits in there. Now I'm doing sideways pressure, not downwards pressure. And that did not take much. So that is good. That's done. <sighs> Go crazy, put an ERC up on each Tridex print head. That is not in the plan. Um, but talking about print heads, that'll be probably an early um use for me of can boards so i really want to play with can stuff and that'll probably be the first opportunity i i take using eddie's um using eddie's tutorials so eddie has some great um stepper and can content on his channel Will you be using something like a microfit for, for the thermistor? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I'll use it. be using an MF3, a two pin MF3. Uh, this is the sex bolt. So Hart K um, had sent me a sex bolt kit a long time ago, and I'm taking the opportunity to use it for this. So I've never assembled one, so it'll be fun. Hey, David. My plan for my Tridex is to take my 250 Trident and I have an orange 350 frame. So I'm gonna make it a 350 by 250 deep. 350 wide, 250 deep. And I'm not gonna worry about the capability of doing duplication mode. I'm gonna keep my 250 bed and just do, um, use that uh, print area. Let's see. I, I, we can put a link to Eddie's channel here. Let's go. YouTube. 
The sex bolt replaces the um, the Z, the nozzle switch, the nozzle end stop. So just Eddie, the engineer, and it comes up as a pre-populated. And this is. There you go. Oh, what's that? Joining late today. Hello, Steve and Charlie. Hey, Jotman. Hey, John. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> okay. I am going to cut this short, and I think I'm just going to very carefully do it with um, flush cutters and feel. And I think I'm going to start out here and I'm going to feel where the wires are and hope that I get it. I'm going to cut across here and now I can see where I'm at. I can feel that I'm not catching any wires. Yep. Just being super careful not to not to catch, especially the, the thermistor wires because they're so small. Okay, so that'll come off, and now this is just going to go away. And now I'm going to just turn right up the center. Cut this fairly, fairly close. But now I can see where the wires are, so. Nice and clean. And then these can bend back a little, little tighter to the, and be a little, oops, be a little more hidden. <sighs> you find the side skirts you made for Ender 3 switch wire. So William Martin Harris. If you're on the Voron Discord, go to the Ender 3 to Switchwire thread, and there's a pin in there with my mods that I did for the Ender 3 to Switchwire build. Um, many, much of what I did, um, Dark Dog incorporated into his mod. So check to see, because he's probably improved them. So. Okay, that is there. This is here. Let's join these two together. And make sure I don't screw something up. So we need to clean this. So. So get all my grubby fingerprints from 
handling it off. Oops. There we go. Ooh, dirty. Okay, let me go grab another um, paper towel. <laughs> I don't know if that'll ever get old. There we go. Much less. A little bit still, but much less. Okay, there are a couple of, and I should have done this before I um, I cleaned it, but I can feel a little burr there. And even though the heater won't be over that, I'm going to um, deburr it. I'll try to do this without actually touching any of this. Correct. It'll never be truly clean, but I just want to get all the all the fingerprints off of it. It does. It, I mean, it's it's much better than that last cloth. The one Steve looked at. Hold on, Java Java out of date. It'll be fine. Just getting, just getting the fingerprints off. So my method for applying these, I use one of these rollers I got off of Amazon. And if we set this in place, just kind of prep here. Let's see, is this going to be the better? Yeah, we can do this. So I'm going to get these over here to get them out of the way. If we set this where I'm going to want it, which is basically right here. So if I pull the adhesive off just one end, oops, just one end and fold it back like this. Don't touch that. You can set this on here and move it around without this end touching. Now, once you have it, and I'm going to I'm going to get in the way here a little bit because I want to make sure I get this right. Once you have this where you want it and, I, and I'm biasing this back because I want plenty of room around this front um, mounting hole to, for the for the standoff. So we're just going to make sure we are side to side within a reasonable eyeball level and more importantly, centered on that hole, which is going to bias the whole heater this way just a little bit. But now when you're here, you can then touch the ends here and that will lock this into place. And now we can come in here with our, and I'm gonna keep my fingers out, so I'm gonna use my tweezers and grab the Grab the adhesive. I mean the, the backing, not the adhesive, the backing. There we are. Now I've got it. Now I can 
roll this, roll this in this direction to keep from getting bubbles on it. And something I'm realizing, let me let me mention it, mention it when I'm done here. But that is how I've been doing these. And it's not centered, but I tried to center it on this hole. So the whole thing is over this way, but it was more important for me to have clearance around that hole. And just push all this down. Now, something I realized as I was doing this, the, the, the question on a thermal fuse came up. There is a resettable thermal fuse built into these. That's what's under this bulge right here. So it does have, it still has some protection. Just get some pressure on this. Now, the instructions, the the recommendation is to put this under weight for a while, but I'm not gonna do that for this. I wanted to do this on camera and I think it'll be fine. Are you going to say that you need to put a magnet first, as I said? Um, could have put the magnet first, but since, I mean, it'll be fine. I don't know what this is called. I would just search for um, adhesive roller or something. Linoleum roller. Okay. Hey, liquid ice. Putting the magnet on first might have been might have been a good idea, but it'll be fine. It, it won't be as nice and stable, but. Ink, ink roller, print roller. See how dirty that was? the first round. Called a brayer? Okay. So, wires out of the way, cover that up. This, I believe, is bigger than the, than the plate, so this isn't gonna be too, too critical. We're gonna trim it anyway. So let's just do the same thing. Looks like the magnet has no holes. Nope, we'll, we'll make holes. So all we care about here is that we're overlapping the edges. So. So we're making sure that we are overlapping on all the edges and we'll just do the same thing.
Okay. And let's trim this up. Oh, where can I buy a heating mat? 210 by 210, 240 volt. Kinovo. That's where I would start. And if they don't sell that exact size and you really need that exact size, they will make it for you. I have a nice cutting mat here, so I am just going to put that to size. I got a new blade. Christian Plastic, thanks for gifting the memberships. I hope they go through. I use a cold roll laminator. So the problem with the cold rolled laminator in this particular case, now for the magnet, it'd be fine, but I've got all these, these bumps here for the, for the heater bed. Does Kinovo have any real competition? There's... I don't remember the other brands, but there's some reasonable stuff out there. Okay. Ah, much better, I think. Go. One. Apex peppers. I want to build a Voron for my camper van, thinking of a Vizer or solid fork, all running directly off the Leisure batteries, 12 to 14 volts. Ooh, fun. Oh, the woodworker in me wants to pull out a flush cutting router bit for this task. Ah, this is... This is perfect. Just a few medium pressure passes. With the exacto knife. There we go. This one, making sure we don't get to those wires. Oh, there we go. Nice. Now, we've got... Let's see if I can get the impression of where the, the screw hole is. One, paying extra careful attention to stay away from the soft bleedy bits. Yeah. No. here. 
and I'm just pushing, I'm pushing on the magnet just to make sure I see where the, where the hole is. It'll indent a little bit and you can see it. There's one. I could push from the other side, but I don't want to push against the adhesive. Okay, so. three um, using the the hole itself as a guide it works pretty well to just kind of roll the the tip of the blade around just keep your fingers out of the way it's fine I think it's it ends up with a cleaner hole I think than trying to use the deeper tool That worked. That worked. Those all fit in there nice. Okay, bed is prepped that way. Everything is good. So then this is gonna go. Let's back out a little bit this is going to go like this and then let's see what size they say by 16 sorry to come again with this any plan to build one vz bot in the near future i don't have any plans i think the vz bot is cool um i am not planning on building one doesn't mean i wouldn't want to build one i'm not planning on it okay those are way too long i think are these 20s that i accidentally grabbed Yeah, I grabbed 20s. <sighs> what was the tool that put the chamfer on PTFE? I used, when I when I chamfer the inside, the inside of a PTFE, I used just a um, countersink bit like this. Um, three flute, center reamer, countersink, something. I just bought this off Amazon. I think it's like a 60 degree, is that right? And I just use it by hand. Yeah, I think that's what that is, 60, 60 degree. Easy bot seems fun, I'll be a somewhat specialized in what they do. Yeah, it still seems fun. It's either 16 or 12 I'm gonna want for this. What I'm doing right now is trying to figure out how long of a screw is needed for fastening this to the, looks like 16s. As Yuri said, it's 16.
I think an RC reamer is going to be too too sharp of an angle. Although it might work okay, I don't know. Okay, so that's like that. Yeah, there we are. Nope, I didn't catch the, did not catch the, the nut. Loosen this one. This up. This up through here. Yeah, and that'll be nice because you barely even see those. Simon Vez is going to try to print it two. Oh yeah, I saw that. He hit twenty thousand subscribers, so he's going to hit try to print at two thousand millimeters per second. Nuts. Use an exacto knife and just yellow it. Oh, a lot more drink. How are, where are we at? We're not even two hours in. Awesome. And oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So the bed here, I am going to take the bed wires, and these are just going to go right here. So keeping those like that, I think they just need to be cut right about. Right about there, and that'll be fine. It's always a, uh, always fun. Ah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep these because I'm gonna use them on the other side. Um, these are by our cloth insulated wires, so I think I'm going to also take some of my, where did that go? Oh, heat shrink. If you ever started, if I ever started a VZ again, mine's in the middle of a rebuild for months, I do all wheel drive just for fun. I'm just not a fan of the chintzy gantry white. I haven't seen the specifics of the build. I haven't seen the specifics of their build to um, how things are together. I know the whole thing is just an interesting project though. Okay, so these are off cuts from my label maker. So these end up being a good use for those. So let's strip this. So the if, if you aren't aware, let's go a little more info here. Wagos have on the side of them built in instructions 
four. Let's see if we can get in here. They have built-in instructions for what size they're for. And also right here, if you can see, it says 11 millimeters. That's how long you're supposed to strip um, the insulation off of the wire, wire you're gonna put in there. So just a little bit of useful info. They've got info or the instructions right printed right on them. And that's 11 millimeters there. So it'll tell me how far to strip. And then a little clean that up with my yikes. Just that, and then duplicate it on the next one. And I'm just going to take this heat shrink and just take it right up to the edge there. But all it's going to do is control any potential future fraying of this insulation. Hey, Maker Source, welcome. What changes will V0.2 have over V0.1? Um, the biggest change is the um, mini stealth burner. So a, a lot of other things are incremental, um, not 100% finalized, though. So. Why is that not? Oh, it's because I wasn't, wasn't going in the right side. There we go. And then these, that is not bad. That is not gonna be a problem. And then right back here in this little gap here is where I'm gonna put my microfit connector and then a zip tie will go and hold these wires here. So that'll keep that nice and clean. So I'm gonna cut this right here, microfit. and get my, once again, I'm gonna to try to reuse the rest of this wire for the remaining length. This and Okay, so those and then the Terminals and yeah, noise canceling is <laughs> does a really good job. I mean, I'm able to run my AC here without too much effect. So, okay, crimp on the terminal for the microfit.
And there we go. And now when that plugs in, everything will get tied together. <sighs> Micro pain. I don't mind them. Could you give the dimensions of the pin on the microfit removal tool? I wanted to make one. You could try making one. So this is what you're talking about. This is the, the microfit terminal removal. We can do that. We have We are about 0 0.9, 0 0.89 is what it says on the end. The next step is 2.16. And then the thickness is a little less than half a millimeter. Does that help? The next step, the bigger step here is 5.87. And then just to give you a better shot of the overall shape. There you go. Does that help? Okay, bed. Awesome. Oh. And these can go away for now. We'll need them back. We will need them back. Um, I guess while I'm here, let's put the ends on this. Length of the pointy part. Oh, yeah, it is. Sorry about that. Length of the pointy part is important. Let's see, what's gonna be the easiest way to measure this? Let's go back to these guys. And the first. Looks like 5.8. Five point eight, the length to the second one is about nine point three. And then to the last one, I'm not gonna be able to get a great. So the second one to the last one is about one one point seven. So that last step. Does that help? I don't think anything one millimeter in diameter is going to be great for removing. I think that half a millimeter is an important, an important dimension. Did it to DDS time and both my brick bell delta fans have been good, yada yada. Okay. Those are there. That's there. Are we ready to put this? I guess we can assemble a sex bolt here. So are there instructions on this thing? I've never actually built one of these. Um, I'm not sure I want to search for this. Actually, I'm going to search for this off camera. <laughs> um, 
one says stop. Let's try that. <laughs> Search for that off camera. Their instructions. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Waiting on my LDO Trident kit to show up. Already purchased and received all my printed parts. Are there any assembly jigs you would recommend printing while I wait? Probably a good um, jig for making sure that the Y extrusions are the same in the same position. So there is an alternate um, assembly jig in there. You can use the, the extrusion that you would use for the rear center vertical extrusion as that, but the printed jigs might be a good idea too. Search for, well, I wanted to find the, the specific instructions. I didn't want to find the bolt. I wanted to find the instructions for assembling this and they're all, it's all, see, six bolt. So let's see, assembly manual, awesome. Oh boy, this is fancy. I think it's also linked on the solid Ford page. Okay, so I need to press those into there. And then that bolts there. That goes together. That goes together. Those screw into there. And ta-da. Okay. <laughs> Let's, that's a lot easier than, that's easy. Let's see what our parts are. Try this one. Oh, I've got extra parts here. I got extra parts for a different project. I have not used one of these, so I'm looking forward to it. This is this is good. I got I got M or oh, shorter M2 self-tapping screws. I've got a couple of lengths of sex bolt here, and then I've got the bushings. So I think should be able to press these into here. Let's just press them in with my, with my handy dandy vise, even though it's probably not needed. That is tight tighter than I expected it to be. Does this still go in there? Oh yeah, it still, still goes in there fine, so. And I get two of these into here. Um. I think that's going in okay. It's just a lot of pressure. I think that's all the way in. I don't think it goes all the way. I think that is fully, fully uncertain. I don't want to put too much. Yep, I see it on the other end. I see it down in there, no gap. And then this still slides in there just fine. Awesome. Use the bolt. I could have. Um, there's nothing to push against on this side. You're not doing the printer manual like that? Why not, Yuri? So do I use the shorter bolt here? Looks like maybe. Okay, so that tightens up there. And then this goes in here and now, oh huh, cool, yep, that works.
Did it come with a spring? If so, you want to use it. It's more accurate that way. I do not have a spring. I I got this from Heart K sent me this little sex bolt kit quite a while ago. So if the spring is a newer edition, it is. That would be why I don't have it. Oh, hey, Jared. Okay. So these self tapping screws did a little bit of stress marks on my part here. I'm going to see if we can get rid of those without too much heat. I don't know if I'll be able to. Yeah. Yep. Here, this is probably the better camera for it. All gone. Or ninety percent gone. Um, what was that? I just had something beep. What just beeped? What just beeped? Oh, <laughs> that was the, um, the Charlie cam turned off. Why did the Charlie cam turn off? Have to leave. Wish everyone a great evening. Thank you. See you, Alex. And here, if you're keeping track, Charlie's going out again. Oh. Charlie Cam is sort of back. Does that work? No, it's having trouble. Something's going on. He's going to turn it off. Okay. <sighs> Is there a screw that goes the bottom of the bolt once inserted into the brass tack? Yes, there is. There was a, a screw. I don't know if you saw me insert it. There was a screw in there. Small bolt to keep it locked in place. There is a lot of um, play here. I'd be worried about a spring holding this out because then it's got to push for a while. I guess it's okay. Okay, that is done. So let's bolt this onto here. Two more square nuts. And how long do these need to be? These are socket head. 12s? 16s, 20s, not, not 12s. It's a tiny weak spring. Some people mod, mod the mod with. Okay. Not critical though, right? Okay. Looks like, looks like 20s. I'll have to check that out. I haven't shot much on Amazon. Okay, so this is going to go in. Oops. Here. There. And there. Oops.
So how are we on clearance here, Yuri? Well, do I need to get this like super close to the bed or how far? Just barely, almost, almost touching the bed. Is that what I'm aiming for here? Almost touching, but not quite. So is that about right? Cool. That looks good there. Awesome. Okay, that little baggie of project stuff goes over there. And let's clean up a little bit. Got an extra, a longer Chicago Bolt piece. I don't know what scenario that would be useful. Uh, do you print many toys or gadgets? Um, right now I'm printing a Death Racer. I printed another piece for it yesterday. I got the, the main body, but this is the one with the six millimeter reinforcement rods. Yeah. Oh, hey, this would be a good example of um, getting rid of these stress marks from ABS. Check this out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It works pretty well. Just don't hold the temp heat on it too long. You can move it around. You can also have a similar effect if, if the part is nice and flat. You can put it on a printer bed and set your temperature to 100, 110 and let it sit there for a while. It'll get rid of those also if you don't have a heat gun. Charlie in. What is this? Number eight. You couldn't hear it because I wasn't, I was intentionally not talking during it. Cause as soon as I talk, it'll turn off the noise canceling and then you would hear it. I don't know what temperature it hits. I just set it at the max temperature for the heat gun and, and just be careful. It's number 10. <laughs> okay. This is there. Let's bring the printer back up. and look at where we're at. So sex bolt was easy. Get rid of that, that, and that, and that. Okay, attach the bed. So basically did that. So now belts. I'm gonna leave the bed off while I belt this thing up. Adding the belts to the printer, add the B belt. This is the belt path. Am I zoomed in here? Yeah. Same belt path as, as Trident V2. Remove the belt and use it to cut an equal length belt. This is what I, this is what I do. I, I run one belt and then I remove it and cut another belt the same length and then rerun both of them. 
It's very important that the lengths of the two belts are exactly equal. Re-add the belt using the same routing as before. Then add the A belt. And then we have carriages. Okay. Oh, this will be fun and interesting. I think this is probably the best angle. Have some belt. I'm using off cuts from what I have, so it's all gates. I may, this is probably going to be enough for the whole printer. So I'm going to start. So one one tip here, Yuri, you might want to add this. I think you're going to want, in almost all cases, to remove your tensioner screw because it's now in line with the belt. So I think it's just gonna get in the way right now. So I'm gonna remove these. I know it's easier to remove it on Trident, so I'm assuming here. Oh. Exactly equal, down to the nearest tooth. So exactly equal to two millimeters, since it's a two millimeter pitch belt. <laughs> is that is that work? What is your most favorite tool and brand? Oh, there's so many different tools. I have no idea. That's a good question. I I'm I'm a little I'm a little speechless. I don't know. I mean, I use DeWalt for my power tools, but I wouldn't say they're my favorite. They're just what I chose. I think I would be just as happy with Milwaukee or um, what's the other, what's the blue? Makita. Any of those would probably be fine too. Charlie's back in a spot, but that camera's acting up. So I don't know what it's doing. It didn't do that last stream. Okay, let's get this ran. Um, I'm gonna put the other glasses on because we're dealing with small things. This is gonna go... Okay, so this is here. I think this goes here, and then we're gonna go in here, and then back through. We can make this. And it's bent in the wrong way, so I'm just kind of bending the end of the of the belt to try to get it to go in the direction I want it to. Let's try being something. What can I use? Oh, there it is. That's through there. Now that should. Yep. I don't know how. How can I make this better for you to see? Is this okay? We're going through the front idler, and then we're heading back towards the B. towards the B-stepper. So nice being able to toss this thing around. Back towards B, in, and around the pull, the stepper. There's no little um, pillar here to get caught on. So that goes through there. And then over here. There, there, just misses that.
Let's see, am I missing anything in chat? Is there a top cam? There is, but I'm not sure it's any better for seeing what I'm doing. We can try it. Um. Okay. And then this comes through here. That is one run of the belt. Now, how long do I want this to be is a question. How much do I have here? I don't know if I have enough to do this all with this specific belt. Let's see. The X carriage. It's this guy. This is modified for the orbiter I'm using. You can see better this way? Okay. And the belt comes around through here. So I don't need a whole lot. I don't need a whole lot of extra belt to grab on and do stuff. So I think I'll do exactly that much. And let's just cut it. Let's find out. <clears throat> do I have enough to do both belts with this? And then we reverse all of that work. This is the good one. Um, Mark it somehow. <laughs> I marked my I marked my pad. Darn it. Try to undo that. Yes, it's a work surface. Yes, it'll get dirty. Well, one way or another, it's the it's the it's the long one. What I marked it with is not actually showing up. Yeah, that's got to be this one. Yeah, that one. OK. Yes, so I have enough. Let's see here. Just mesh the teeth and then cut at the end, and that's good. Two. Now we have two equal length belts. Now we get to do this again. Um, I'm going through and making sure that the, the text on the belt is going to be right side up. OK, around the idler into <clears throat> the tensioner, get some water. Okay, around the idler, into the tensioner, bend the end here, get all the sharpie on my finger that I put on there. Back through here. Go, I hit it right. 
back towards the B-stepper. Get caught in the extrusion. Where's my tweezers? There we go. Around the B stepper pulley. There we go. And then back to the front. Okay, so those are there. Now we're gonna run the other belt. Make sure the text is the right way up. Yay, there's no text on this section of belt. Andre, thanks for becoming a member. Text should always be the right way up, absolutely. The right looks good, but the form factor is why I'm looking for a SFF DMM type solution. Are we talking about something else? Okay. So we went towards the front idler on this side. We'll do the same thing. We'll just do it on this side. So we'll come around here into the here and maybe grab that with the tweezers. There we go. And then bend bend the end try to make a you see that try to try to give it a little yep there and then right through towards the a stepper this one might be a little more tricky because we have the end stop there. I need to be able to see a little better. Let's see here. Up. Let's grab it. Let's just take it through the top here. Take it through the top and then I can loop it around there and come back this way. That looks like it's easier. There we go. That worked well. Straight across. And it's just going to go through there. Now it is belted. Now we've got to put the X carriage on. Ah, <sighs> belt's been fairly painless. Yeah, I don't have any complaints about any of the belting. There's little tricks you can do, which direction you start from. So I've got this. What is this going to be? Oh, I've got to prepare this. So let's set this aside. Let's go to the carriage. So we need some heat sets and we're going to add five heat sets to this thing. Now this this um, carriage has been modified. This is for the mini afterburner setup that's in the instructions. The difference is the one that I have here is using captured M3 nuts for these two inserts. And this third one here is not used because I'm not using a mini afterburner. I'm using an orbiter. And then I'll need to put the two on the bottom. So basically, I have two heat sets to put in here. So just a little better look at this. There are captured nut spots for here, and there isn't a, a one in the center there, but I have to put the two on the bottom. And I'm going to clean up some of the print stuff here. So let me look at this and see where we're at. Everything's pretty clean 
except for this little area here. This looked a little ugly. There we go. And then some droopy in the there. And there. I think that'll do it. Okay, two heat sets. I didn't order 22 pulleys for my build, made belting the printer kind of difficult. Oops. Don't know what to try to get GitHub to show STLs, try different browsers. It depends on the STL. Some if it's a if it's a binary or an ASCII STL, it'll display, it either will or won't display. Is that right on GitHub? Is that the difference? It's funny. I keep having M3 by six button head screws show up. It's because they're in the skirt holes down here and um, they're, they're falling out because I test fit the skirts and they're slowly working their way out. And I've, I'm down to, oh, now two. <laughs> Oh, uh, what did I miss? Did I miss something? Did Steve use a print printed nut bars? Mine measure 0 0.808 taller than they should be, but it's not even close to fitting into the extrusions. Which extrusions, Andre? I did use printed nut bars, but I modified them. Um, I think Yuri was going to include the modified ones, or he was going to modify them for the Maker Beam extrusions. The ones that are out there should work fine with the um, LDO style extrusions, but Maker Beam needs thinner not bars. Hey, Ricky B. Okay, two heat set. This is for the clicky setup mounting, I think. Okay, so. I wanted to build a small printer to print ABS. Any suggestions? A small printer to print ABS is a V0, a switch wire, a micron. Cost effective wise, a V0 is your, is your most cost effective solution. The 1515 extrusions from DFH, that they'll, they'll be maker beam style. So they'll be the same style as this. Um, okay, so these nuts are a very loose fit in here, so I'm just going to put those in after. But I think we are clear to start putting this together. Let's see what our next steps are. So we're gonna need four M3 by eights. M3 by eights, is that what we're gonna want? Yeah, it looks like it, okay. M3 by eight button heads. Okay, we are good. So we got this, we need M3 by eights. One, two, three, four. And we will start by just kind of getting these belts loosely in here. Just enough to where I can grab the ends with uh, some pliers or something. Now there, and M3 by eights on the carriage. And just touching, I don't want to tighten this yet. It's 
So Kyrios from the um, Voron team modified this setup for me to use the Orbiter 2. So big thanks to, to him. Okay, so these two I'm gonna tighten just a little more. These are these are even here. And then I'm gonna take my pliers and try to pull these through. There we go. And we're gonna go through the whole, like here, we wanna make sure that the, the belt is riding in the right spot on all of the on all of the um, the parts. So we're going to go around and see like here, this isn't riding on it. So we're just going to edge that up to where it's in the middle of the in the middle. It's going to be kind of hard to see and I may need a flashlight and my glasses. Let's see if the front idlers are riding in the right spot. That one is and that one so now I want these to be the same amount I probably want one more squeeze in here and tighten that up Need one more tooth on the next one. So loosen this. One more tooth here. There we go. All right. Yep. Should be. Hey, Pascal. Soon, soon, soon. What? Okay, so these are both the same. Everything is still loose, but we'll tighten it up with the tensioners. Should be able to tighten this up a little bit. Get all of this snug. We're gonna break 200 watchers today. We're close. There we go. Okay. Is there a spot for the extra belt to go or? Everything is riding in the right spot. Oh, V0.2 is soon. Yes, very, very trademark soon. Now we're gonna put the tensioner screws back in See you, John. Thanks for being here. Okay, so that and that, and now we're going to tension it. And we're also going to make sure that we continue to touch, like here, we're not quite touching at the same time. So this side would need to be tightened. Nothing built in for excess slack right now, okay. I think it'll be fine though, still. It doesn't get in the way. It doesn't hit, it doesn't get in the way over here. So I think we're fine. Okay, so I am going to tighten these until it's about the tension I think it should be. And this is just by feel. That's good. It's not gonna need to be as tight as you might think. Okay, so now I'm gonna run this through its path. And you notice even now the X carriage doesn't move. Now we're gonna feel which side. So there's just a little bit. So, so when I move this through its range of motion and back, I'm using these front end stops as the um, reference point before when we had built this together, they're both, they both hit at the same time. 
But now if I push here, you might not be able to see that. There's just a tiny bit of movement there, which means this side, we would tighten just a little bit and then run through the motion again. And now it doesn't move at all. The other side moves a little bit. So I'm going to loosen this side because I'm already at the tension I want to be. I'm going to loosen this side just a little bit and run through. That doesn't move. That moves a little bit. Let's loosen this a little bit. Make sure we have everything is good. Just a little bit and tighten this one just quite a bit too much then. So. There we go. Now they feel the same on both sides. And you notice when I'm moving this, the X, I'm not, I'm not holding the X carriage. I'm, I'm holding the rail. The, the X, um, is the carriage is not shifting at all. Everything's moving nice and smooth. Moving nice and smooth. And then at the front, they touch at the same time. There's no play on either side. I would call that good. And the belt tension is fine. And then the other pain point on a solid fork is making sure that we're not rubbing here at the top of this rear extrusion. Now, I think Yuri was going to spec this extrusion another millimeter or so shorter just to make sure. Um, I am not rubbing on the on anything. I'm closest to the printed parts. Um, it might be maybe put a chamfer here, Yuri just to get that print that printed part out of the way it's not going to hurt it but it would make sure that it keeps the um yeah you could you could put a little a little notch right here where the belt would be because those are always going to be that tall because they have to go up to this extrusion do you know what i'm meaning but i'm not touching anywhere we are yeah. We are good. Yeah, see, I can see light through there. Not touching. Now the plastic pieces are really close to touching, but I don't think they're actually touching. So. Cool. Belted up. Okay, can the bed go on? No, I don't want to put the bed on yet because I want to start on the wiring and I'm going to need to remove this motor mount to get the wiring passed um, into this, this spot where it goes. So let's look at the instructions and see where we're at next. But so we did belt tension and gantry racking. Go to the belt tension for more. Is that a... Here, let's see what that goes to. Where does this go? Oh, Voron Design. So it goes to the Voron Design documents. Okay, so we did belts. Now we get to do clicky. Okay. Clicky mount. Two M3 heat sets, two M3 by eight button heads and a dock mount. Okay. Pop quiz for the masses on 2.4, checking Z belt tension by feel. Are you checking above the gantry or below? Oh, for the Z belts, I always check above. And I, I always have the bed kind of low. I mean, the gantry kind of low. Okay, we don't need that yet. So let's get some clicky parts. I don't know how much of this we're going to need, but eventually we're going to need it all, right?
I had completely forgotten that we had to assemble Clicky on this. So. That's okay. Clicky. Couple of heat sets. And this is for the tool head side, I think. Does this go up here like this or something? Yeah. Okay, heat sets here. Heat sets and magnets and glue. So these are special parts for Solid Fork. I don't know if they're shared with Micron or not, but they're not standard clicky parts, or at least the mount isn't. I don't know if this is. Move gantry to 150 millimeters and then pluck and then move to where upper part of the belt is 150 and pluck the belt should sound about the same. Yeah, as long as they sound the same. Okay, we did not. So where does this mount? So this mounts, I'm assuming to the rear gantry. The problem is we didn't pre-populate some nuts there. That's going to be a problem. Did we miss that, Yuri? That goes... Should probably... Mounts to the B gantry. But we need some... Um, square nuts in there, right? Or hex nuts. Let's see if I can get them in there. I don't know if there's enough room. There might be enough room. Back left part of the gantry, there's a key on the idler. Right. The key's to that, but we've got to mount it actually to the... Um, we have to mount it to the extrusion. Let's see. It mounts right here, right? So it goes in right there and then gets just gets located by that by this little tab here on the printed part. So let's see what we can do about that. And we get with some tweezers. We might be able to do this. We might be able to do this. I need some better tweezers than these. These are blunt. These are too blunt. If we go in here. Oh, look at that. There's room. It's not a problem. Look at that. I was hoping there was room there. Um, fortunately, there's room to get them in there. Just some tweezers into the into the end. That's this is open. So, woohoo! Where are where'd my mouse go? First, I've lost my mouse. There it is. M3 by 8s.
There we go. Sweet. <laughs> what are we? What are we talking about? <laughs> okay, now we gotta clean. We gotta do all this clicky assembly. Um, how does this work? So wires through there, got an end stop goes in here. What size screw is this? Is this still a M2 by 10? So this piece bolts in right here, right? Okay, and then the wires come up and go where? Okay. And then a, an X end stop screws into the side here. But we're not there yet. That's not what the instructions say. We got to put a M six by three magnet into the dock. We need to put them into here. So let's find a micro switch. Well, micro switches just for this project. So this is the clicky probe. What happens is a micro switch with the lever removed pushes into here. There's there's three holes in this part for the terminals those get pushed in there and then from the other side magnets get pushed into place and the pressure the 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 pressure fit pushes these these terminals on the switch against the magnets and so and then when the magnets when these two pieces there's magnets in this piece with wires connected to them and then the magnets complete that circuit. So let's start by removing the lever from this from this micro switch. And I just take my little needle nose pliers and squeeze there and that pulls right off. There is an arrow here on the printed part and that points to where the actual switch is. This should, as long as I don't bend it out of the way. Should push through, but you might have to open up these holes, which I think I'm going to have to do. Um, teeny tiny drill bit. Nope, oh, that's too big. Teeny, teeny, tiny drill bit. Those are completely closed. What size drill bit? Okay, that. And let's just grab my little index of, of bits that is falling apart. There we go. Let's just go itty bitty. Let's try that first. So I have a star it little pin vise. Will this clamp down to this size? There's another tool, little star it pin vise. I bought it, I mean, I bought it like most things off of Amazon. 
should be able to take this and drill that right through. That was a number 56 drill bit. I don't know if it's the right size, but now it goes in. I just picked, I just picked what looked about right. It was a number 56. How close is that to what I should have done? Hey, see you, Craig. I don't know if you're still here, but thanks for being here. This is clicky, not unclicky. Um, it's Starrett, S-T-A-R-R-E-T. I bought it, like I said, I bought it off of Amazon. What does this say? Yeah, it's just S-T-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T. Starrett C. <laughs> um, is there a Steve Jobs Discord? There is not. I have no desire to maintain a, a, a Discord. <laughs> okay, so then this goes here in a couple of M2x10s. Hold the switch in place. Point oh three millimeters too large on the number 56. That's OK. It's working. OK, so a couple of screws to hold that in, and then we get to press the magnets into place, which there are clicky tools, press tools. I've got microphone. Sorry about that if it's making a lot of noise. Here we go. Okay. I want us to do that. I don't do that yet. Build the clicky probe. So one probe body, insert the magnets into the top of the probe and then the back. Okay. Z brackets updated with a chamfer. Awesome. Thanks, Jerry. So I need to find a selection of magnets. Where did I put? I know I had some here somewhere. Let's use, let's use these and some black magnets. And start looking into stir up. Might as well get a combination square or two off of them too. <laughs> these correct. Okay, these are going to need some glue. So super glue is probably I've used super glue when assembling these on stream before. Probably not the best option. An epoxy. 
um, is a good option, a two-part epoxy, the five-minute epoxy or whatever. Um, I've been using this Gorilla Glue, this clear Gorilla Glue, and it seems to be working good so far. Don't take this necessarily as this is the thing to use um, because I'm still trying it and I haven't had it fail yet, but I'm gonna use this. So we are going to get that. There's printed jigs off of the clicky site and this allows us to put this in here and give a, 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 a flat surface to clamp the magnets in with. Um, and then does this work? No, that does not. That would be for this side. So I think we're just gonna have to push these in the old fashioned way. Make sure the black magnets are conductive. That's a good idea. I've not actually used them for this. So that is a great, a great idea that I didn't think of. Good call, because they're not. Don't use black magnets, or at least check first. That would have been bad. Um, where do I have got these? There's enough here. Good call. These these didn't these didn't. If they don't register here, let's see. Same test. Yeah, these do. The other one didn't. So that I mean the lesson there is check. Don't assume. I did a poor job of assuming. Oh, okay. Let's see. The trick with the Clicky probe is that you install the two, these two front magnets in the same direction, and then the rear magnet in the opposite direction. How about just sanding the two sides of the magnets? I'll just use magnets that I know work. It's not worth, it's not worth having them be black. This glue says it works best when you use water as a, um, if, if you apply it to wet parts. So I'm going to get moisten a paper towel so I can get the, um, the pockets here wet. I'll be right back. Is a clicky helper? No, this is some Pryline orange. No, Paramount orange. It's Paramount orange. Okay, let's get this started. A little bit of, little bit of moisture. Is that better? and a little bit of glue. And I think I'm gonna try to do these one at a time. A little bit of glue. That's one. And then a little bit of glue in the next pocket. And then we're going to make sure we're going the same direction. There we go. Oops.
Dealing with magnets is always so fun. There we go. Let's make sure these are fully seated. That one did not seat as far as the other one, and that's annoying. There we go. And now the last one is going to get seated the opposite. A little bit of glue. Way too much glue. The opposite. And wipe off all, <clears throat> all the excess glue. Ah, what are we at? It is not CA glue. So this is a Gorilla Clear Glue. I've had some success with it. I was recommended to me by someone else to try. I wouldn't say that it's the thing to go with. I'm just using it. And those are all flush. Mostly, for the most part. Oh, the one in the party in back changed the background so RCF is running from a bear. <laughs> and then we'll put a, that'll need glue. So let's put a little bit of that and where is this part this part here so oops the glue for the magnet that holds it in the in the dock and in here This one doesn't matter the orientation as long as it is the same on both. So I'm gonna leave one there and then just push this together. Oops. Like that. And then wipe all the excess off because I've been sloppy. Be sloppy. Okay, so magnet in there. This can go in there and stay in place. Cool. <sighs> Make sure they are conductive. We did. Two-part epoxy would work well too. That's probably the default recommendation. I just hate dealing with epoxy. Okay, all that glue, throw it away. And then what does this get?
M3 by 20s. Um, I'll check the the function of the system when I get the other side wired up. I'm pretty, I mean, I'm confident that these are going to have a, well, I mean, it's, since I said that, let's check it. It's normally closed, so I should get, yep, yep, it's fine. Yep, and when it's closed, it stops. But we'll check it again when we get the rest of the system. Um, M3 by 20s, bolt this guy to the printer. I can go there and so I don't lose it. The dot can go, the probe can go right there. There we go. After having both Euclid and clicky probes, do you have a preference for one over the other? Um, no, I think my, my stance has always been, I kind of prefer the hardware of the Euclid, but the clicky, Works fine too. <sighs> the clear Gorilla Glue works better and faster if you spritz one part with a little water. I did. I did put a little bit of water on it. I just used a little paper towel and smushed it in there. There we go. Um, next. Lower carriage mount. So I need a switch and we need to put the wires in. Now, the only thing I'm a little concerned about here that would be nice, and there's plenty of room for it. I think it might be nice if there was a hole here that you could push the wire in a little further instead of relying on it being over enough for the magnet to grab it. If you could, there's plenty of space here. If this went in, and I wonder if I could just pin vise that, drill it out, but I'm not going to. We're gonna assemble it as it is. But I think a little hole to where you could put the wire in, the bare wire in a little further to make sure that it stays there when you're pressing the, uh, the magnets in might be good. Are you going to do all these changes as you go? Are you going to have a roll up of all the changes? I asked because I printed all the stuff like a month or two ago. Okay, so I need some wires. And what am I gonna do here? I'm probably gonna have a connector on it. So let's just do some We're going to need a couple of things. I think this will probably be enough. Hopefully use up that spool. I don't know if I got, I got extra wire in this. So this is the, this is, we're getting into wiring. Lineo sent a wiring harness for this. It's pretty bright blue, but we're going to go with it. It's V0 style, but longer. But I wanted to see if there was, so that's zip ties and stuff. Okay, I wanted to make sure there wasn't extra wire in here I should be using. So I'll use this. So I think it's not gonna have to be very long. So let's just do more than I think I'm gonna need. Okay, 
So, wire there, wire goes in here, and then I need three more magnets. Two, and three. So, three more magnets. Cut long trim later. Yep. I think this is going to be more than long enough because it's just going to here and then it's. This is way up here. I think that's okay. A little bit of this. I don't know if this is going to be a better angle here. Let's just play around. Yeah, let's try this. So how long is this going to need to be stripped? Let's try this first. That. And then this is going to go through here. This is going to go and wrap around. I don't, what I don't want to happen is the end of that wire to get caught underneath the um underneath the magnet which is why i think a little deeper hole for the end of the wire would be useful on these because then i could strip that back like half an inch and push it in there and it's not going to interfere with the with the magnet seating. That's what I'm worried about here, is the magnet not seating properly. I think the fix, at least this fix, is just to make sure when it bends over, it's not going to... It's not gonna get underneath. I think that's okay where it's at right there. Let's try it. On an AB, LDO sends you seven inches for clerky. No idea how that translates to this. I don't know either, but um, putting these on here, so I know I have the orientation correct. I don't want those in the equation yet. I just want this one. I want to do these one at a time just to see how it goes. So let's get a little bit of moisture in here and some glue, ice. Then I think I'm going to try pushing this on initially. Yep, just like that. And then... <laughs> oh, there we go. Now that went in. Not super pleased with that, but I think it's okay. We'll check continuity here when I get them both on there. That pressed in okay. See if I can get an angle on this to where I can 
press this in a little more. No, you can't. Moisture and wire, it's okay. It's just in the in the magnet hole for helping activate that glue. Okay, there's one. Let's try the next one. I'm gonna try the next one using my thought of drilling a hole. So I did one this way. I'm going to use this two millimeter drill bit and I'm gonna drill a little pocket there for the end of the wire. I would use my pliers, but there's no, there's no surface directly to the other side. There's this, cur this angled surface here that isn't gonna work. There's nowhere to grab it. I can try that flat spot, but it's okay right now. Let's get out my... You can go 1.5 millimeters deep on the hole. Yeah. Okay, so I made a little hole there that I'm going to now strip this wire back just a little bit more than I would have. And now the idea is I can push this into that hole, then push it back through here. And now that's forcing that wire to be down and out of the way. It can't push up underneath the magnet. Let's see how that works. the other two magnets and now we are on this one so now it should go in there press together now let's try the you were saying use my nipex <laughs> yeah, that seems to have worked. Yeah, that worked. So with this together here now, we should have continuity on these wires. So let's strip these back a little bit and everything should work.
Okay, so that one, and I didn't strip them back very far. Yep, it works. And it sits flush. So the last thing to do is put in that last magnet wherever it went. There it is. <laughs> Caught here. Last magnet. Um, apex. There we go. Excess glue, excess glue, this guy back over here, and this is ready. That can throw away. Catch up. Oh, the noise canceling was entirely hiding the beat. It worked. <laughs> okay. So this part is assembled. Now we need a, uh, so we have our, our Z probe wires. We need to put a X end stop switch here. So prepare two lengths of wire, insert the magnets into the three holes. When the magnets are level, prepare two more lengths of wire and solder them to the outside contents of the, so this micro switch. Using an M2 by 10, mount the switch to the side of the lower carriage. Okay. And use M3 by 20 screws to attach the whole thing to the upper carriage. Okay, so two more lengths of wire. We're gonna want something around the same length since we're going to connectors i don't know i mean we're gonna have a lot of connectors at the tool head i'm a little worried but that's fine i can't see Here and here, and then prep my soldering iron for soldering. Imagine that, use the soldering iron for soldering instead of heat set. I completely missed the XM stop while getting this all installed and had to do it with a part of the on the carriage. Oh, that wouldn't be fun. OK, so the other end stop. So I guess I'll just this like this and maybe we'll do this. We're done with the water. So we're three, three and a half hours in. I don't think it's a jinx at this point. Cameras are working. Now when they break. <gasps> Oops, I was going with this view.
Super Wheel and Neodymium Magnets are my kryptonite. Yeah, I've had a few failures from the super glue, so I've stopped using the super glue. I'm trying this Gorilla Glue. Okay, heat shrink. And that Gorilla Glue has a pretty long cure time, but we're not going to be doing anything with this before that's done curing. Then a little bit of... So let's see how much this shows through um, if I talk through um, heat, the heat shrink. So if I just keep talking, does this come up a little louder in the, in the stream since it can't cancel it out as easily? Which Gorilla Glue are you using? Clear Gorilla Glue. It's got instructions that say if you moisten the, the connection, it helps. Sounds like you were talking to a large aluminum can. <laughs> Let's put some of this stuff away. Okay, this guy, probably want this facing down. That goes there. I think those can go straight out without any problems. So then they'll just go up. Okay, so now we need a... Not much difference. <laughs> okay, so this guy goes here, and then a, hopefully I don't split this. Oh, I hope I don't split this. I should have done this first. Because this whole part is toast if it splits. Stay, stay. How are we doing? Nope, it's starting to split. No, it's not. That's the wrong spot. It's not starting to split. There we go. It's on there. A little tangle of wires. Um, how can I differentiate these? I'll be able to see them. Hmm. Okay, use M3 by 20 screws to attach this to the printer. Have all the screws out here. So that's these two. Okay, so. This guy goes here, and all of these go here. 
zip tie them. I'll probably put a label on them. I'll probably end up putting a heat shrink label on them. But I want to get this on here, see where we're at. That is not wanting to line up. That is quite a bit off. That is quite a bit off. We've got a problem. And I think it's got to be in the carriage. This is not anywhere close to matching here. Let's see. Let's see if we can see this. You see, I don't know if you can see how far off that screw is from going in there. Can you tell? It's quite a, quite a ways off. I don't know where that problem is sourced. But, this thing's still too hot? No. I'm gonna try to fix it by edging the, the heat sets over a little bit. Let's see, can I get this in here? Yes, I can, just barely. Here, let's go this view. <laughs> it is the custom carriage, so I, I, I'm gotta assume it's the carriage. So, but something to look at. I'm gonna try, like I said, to heat this up and just edge them both over just a little bit. Edge them both to the inside. just a little bit and see what happens. I loosened the first screw first. They're far enough off that it wasn't, wasn't making a difference. Hey Nuno. Okay, now let's try it. Let's try this one first. Yeah, there is definitely, I don't know if this is going to be great. I might have to redo these. I'm breaking something. Yep, yep, I broke it all. Ah. Okay, custom carriage needs to be tweaked. It is too fat back here for the... So there's a couple of, of, of problems here. I think this diameter around this piece is too fat for the spot it's supposed to go on this part. I think it's causing an interference problem there. And then the width is different from this. So this is easy to reprint and fix. That's okay. Hey, Dead Bob. Thanks for being here. What can we do instead? So what do we have left? Because I do not want to. Where, where are we at? What camera are we at? Oh. <laughs> 
I do not want to redo this piece. So I think the diameter on this carriage is too is too large. So how much bigger is the salad fork than the micron? It seems like the crucible is smaller, but has the same build volume. Mm, I don't know exactly what you mean. I don't know. I think they're very similar. <sighs> okay, where are we at next? Let's skip. Let's skip this. What can we make progress on? Because I'm going to have to redo. I have the CAD for this carriage. I'll just make a couple of tweaks and call it good. Um, oh, 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 oh. We can test. We can do some testing. I have the, the original. Here we are. Okay, let's compare. Let's compare. This is the original. This is another version of this. These are all the same. So if this is the original. We should be able to put a couple of heat sets in it and bolt this to it. We are going to test, see what's going on. So this is the file. This is the salad fork file here. So we're going to put the heat sets in. This is the original. Make sure these are in straight. I think many people would value watching you make changes to the CAD as some of us are not too great at it. I don't, we're gonna see if we need to make changes to the CAD. So this just measure without heat. Well, I mean, we just assemble the thing. This, this goes on here just like this, right? I mean, this is this is bolting right on, which means it's the modified piece, which is fine. Ooh. I did find one problem here, though, Yuri. So these are M3 by 20s and let's make sure I grabbed an M3 by 20. I did find a little problem here. Unless this is a 25. But the root problem is not, the problem we're looking at is not the, yeah, so this is an M3 by 20. It bottomed out before it was tight. Here, this goes on right here. I'm not missing anything, right? This goes on right there. It bottomed out before it was tight. And I don't know if you can see, it cracked. So we need that to, that hole to be deeper or maybe countersink this more and use a 16. But I suspect, yep, it's on both sides. An M3 by 20 is too long. Is the bottom line there. An M3 by 20 is too long for those. But everything else fits. So the problem is in my carriage here. So I'll tweak, tweak those. I don't know what that's going to take, though. I don't want to tweak those and tweak the spacing. Um, it's possible, Kelvin? I don't think so, though. Although, yeah, 
it might have. That's still a, a problem with the with the design. It's weak. It's weak there for one point. One thing. I just pulled that part right off. It is possible that clamping that to the carriage has. Well, wasn't that wasn't great. <laughs> So anyway, next. Yeah, those need to be, I, I would think. I honestly, I would just open that hole up all the way through because it's not going to get in the way of anything. I would just open that hole up all the way through. Yes, the front fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, where can we make progress now that we can't do the tool head? <sighs> we were on mini afterburner. I can show you what we're doing with mini afterburner. We're not. We are doing a derivative of mini stealth burner with a Orbiter 2 and a Revo Micro. So the Revo Micro goes into this little adapter. That just tightens on there. And then this, this will go into there. And then the orbiter sit in there like that. Actually makes a really nice, really clean. So it's not really mini stealth burner. It's just kind of the cooling part of it. <clears throat> So what do we need to do? Is there anything we really need to do here? We need to put a couple of heat sets in. So let's do that. Is the Voron team working on updates to 2.4? Haven't heard from them in a while. Well, we just had an update. There was an update this spring. There are always little incremental things being thought of and worked on. Um, but I don't know when the next release, major or minor release, is planned. Okay. Heat sets. I'd like to, even if we have to just make little incremental, um... Oh, shoot. No, that's correct little incremental um, progress on this, or just got jammed on my... That's funny. <laughs> I just put that heat set in just from the heat of, the, of it itself. It got jammed on my thing. There we go. Um, I'd like to make little updates on this or progress on this um, build because I, I'd like the next stream to be wiring and maybe configuration. Those should be M3 by 16, not M3 by 20 on the clicky carriage mount. Okay, 16s will still catch. Let's find out. Here's a 16.
Yeah. Yep. Sixteens. That was the problem. <sighs> that is the problem. We will... So the only thing I need to worry about is maybe tightening it is spreading that. I'll look at the I'll look at the cat after stream. I need to switch over to the Revo Voron. I just purchased a print PLA over the winter months, hearing too many issues with the dragon. I haven't ha well, I, I don't I think I only have one. Dragon High Flow installed, and I don't print PLA with it, so I can't really comment, I guess. Okay, so these are cooled down. This goes in here, and I'm guessing these are just in three by eights. might not be the smartest to worry about putting this on yet because it just makes it heavier and I got to put the fans and stuff in. But that'll go there and then this whole thing will go right like that. Right like that. Sweet. That goes in there. And I think these are in three by forties. Yeah. Let's see what this all looks like. Does that go in there? It's on there like that. Tim, it helped me get his LED panels working on it. I have a set of those. That is not wanting to touch. That's not screwing in. I don't know why. Why isn't that? It's it's touching the the it's touching the nut back there, but it's not threading. It's not catching any thread. problem with Revo right now is they have no hard nozzle. I agree. They say October. This is not catching either, so I need to figure out why. So this is good. This is good test stuff. I'm not able to mount this to the tool head and it should mount. I'm 
Why isn't it? What is it hitting? Seems to be chewing up things right there. I think this pocket is a little large for... Maybe it needs a hex nut. I don't like that. But maybe it needs a hex nut. I tried to use a square nut. Let's try a hex nut. Yeah, a hex nut hits the hits the spot a little better. Let's try that. I don't like that. That just strips. Hex nuts are not okay for that. It, it touches, but that just immediately strips. <sighs> I can't wait to get my hands on. I yeah, I'm I'm ready for the obsidian. There needs some work on the X carriage. It's it it needs a little a little a little care. But that's not, um, that's specific to my setup here, the Orbiter. That's not a solid fork thing. Okay, where else? We are a mini afterburner, so we don't need, we're not actually installing mini afterburner. Night, right, Colin. Then we have electronics, mains inlet, okay, what do we want to do, let's, let's start winding down. But part of that is let's install some of the skirts to get those into place. So I think we can turn it over and let's work on this. So I've got the bottom deck panel in place. Put the fork on the front, it looks like a Gordon Ramsay Health's kitchen printer. Have you designed a bottom panel for it already, Steve? I have. I have. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? This is not spec solid fork. Let's pull these off. This is not spec solid fork. So, I took the feet off. Let's see if we can do here. There, that, that's close enough. Okay, so these holes here, heat sets are gonna go in. And are you ready for this? That goes in there. Now it needs a little bit of, little bit of help, but I was playing with the laser. I was playing with laser engraver and I thought it would be cool and a cool reference to have the pinout for the controller I'm using as a handy reference right on the bottom panel. Kind of cool. <laughs> I did that last night. It's 
So I'm pretty pleased. I didn't have any extra ACM to test this on. So I did some tests on MDF just to see what it looked like. And then I just said YOLO and threw this piece on. But yeah, it turned out, I mean, you can read everything. Not all the details showed up well, but. <laughs> okay, let's look at some of the skirt pieces. So this will be a good way to finish this today's stream off is get a good visual on the printer with the skirts, most of the skirts in place. So I went through and tweaked all of the skirts, talking to Yuri about it and see if he minded. And I went and did a new power inlet and all they're all revised. So you'll see what um, all still within Yuri's basic design, but I tweaked them a little bit. So we got a new power inlet. And we can start putting these screws in and getting them on. Getting them installed. The only problem is when you change controllers. That's absolutely true, but it was still fun to do. I like these little slots in the skirts for installing them. That is that was a cool idea, whoever came up with that. I don't know if it was Hart or Yuri. But let's get some of these pieces if I have all the right pieces. This makes installing these so much easier. Um, what is this side? Is that this one or is that this one? I think it's this one. That was CAD Monkey FPV that did those? Awesome. CAD Monkey FPV, that was a great idea. Have I shown the picture of that to Modbot? Not yet. Not yet. I'll get these on and then we'll get a good view of what it what it looks like. Did you engrave it in the same orientation the actual board will be installed? No, I basically just made sure be for legibility, made it as large as I could on the bottom panel. I figure I'm if I'm going to be working on the controller, the bottom panel's off. It's just a panel at that point. It's just a, 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 a surface. I can, I can just be able to read it. As long as I can read it, it's good. Is Trident R2 going to have slots in the skirts? Um, if they make sense, I don't see why not. Um, my bank account always cries. <laughs> Watch. Is Trident R2? Oh, that, I already answered that. 
When are you starting production for other boards? <laughs> See you, Pascal. Oops, let's go up here. You can actually see what I'm doing. These, these little slotted, this, at the very least, this really needs to happen on, on V0. And... What size screw did I use for these? I accidentally printed these little fan guards the wrong way. So, little print boogers I need to clean up. What size screw did I use for these? Must be these. at the bottom what's the difference between the mounting feet onto the end of the extrusion and the current feet set up with the printed parts um what do you mean I mean the mounted on the end of the extrusions Uh, Christian, time to get some sleep. Thanks for being here, Christian. These are 4010 fans. Is the is the intent. I have one of these already assembled. No. Yeah, 40, 40 by 10s. Almost there. sure that these are threaded in just right to uh, 
Why is that having a problem? There we go. There we go. Okay, now the front. With, will the mini stealth burner have 40 millimeter blowers? No. It will not. One, two. Why are you stuck over there? There you go. Any plans on building an MPCNC on stream? No. I already have one. I'm not planning on building any more. I don't, at some point, I may figure out how to, um, how to stream from my other garage. But right now it is not, it's not really a possibility. I mean, it's possible, but just I'm not set up or comfortable with it. Okay. Almost there. We won't have the screen, but this will be. This will be close. There's an STI in the way. Yeah, probably not for too much longer. That's something I might be working on this week is returning it to stock and selling it. I don't know if I'll sell it this week. I need to have something to replace it with, but I think it's it's time. Okay, let's put these back on for now. And let's put these on since I'm here. Oops. Yeah, it's I know, Dustin. I just don't. There's lots of reasons, but I'll be able to, I'll be able to utilize the garage that it's in for more fun maker stuff. And that's kind of a motivation to not have to dedicate a spot for a car in the garage. I'd really like to buy, and I know this is, this is typical in the, I know Nero wants one, I know that, uh, but I've, I've been wanting a Maverick for, for a while. Um, I think it fits exactly what I do very well. I just need something I can carry a mountain bike or my road bike in and go to the hardware store and bring something, be able to bring something back. So the Maverick fits that requirement really well. Um, what size is your MPCNC? I have it set up for a um, 580 millimeter square build area, cut area. MPCNC doesn't allow commercial use, so streaming it. I, the guy who designed that's about 50 miles from here. I know that has nothing to do with what you said, but. I don't think it have they specifically said you're not supposed to do NPC and C content. I doubt it. I am have zero plans of buying a Tesla. Zero plans. I am. I enjoy working on my own cars, although many cars out there are much more difficult to do anymore. But Tesla takes that to another level.
I put an entire eight foot sheet of plexiglass in the back of my STI last weekend. Wow. Okay. So the skirts are as assembled as they're going to get. So let's check them out. So what do you think? This is, I mean, this is not changed significantly. And that was the intent to leave um, the skirts with um, the original design, but I thickened them up and I made the hexes a little larger and then thickened up the areas around it and then redid the, um, the centerpiece here to match. Tom had unique issues with that. I watched that. Um, he, he, his thing was all around modifying the files though. I don't think it was about just having it as content. Yeah. And then I moved the power inlet to this side just because that's my, my own personal preference is to have it on that side. So. <sighs> so I think that was good progress. We got it belted. We found some issues with this modified X carriage that needs to be addressed. Clicky is in assembled and installed. The skirts are on. So I think we're at a point where next stream, it will be wiring it, right? So, yeah. We'll go into, what is this, part three? So five parts is probably about where we're gonna be. I don't think we'll get to wiring and config in the same in the same stream. I would worry about the lifespan of the EcoBoost engine on the Maverick. What about the um, the hybrid engine? And what what would you worry about it on the what Z height did you use on your MPC CNC? Honestly, I don't remember. It was probably four, four inches, but I don't remember. Can't quite see from here, but is the clicky dock aligned with the registration key on the B drive? Yes, it is. Um, oh, no, it's not. Um, let's move that over, that over. I did not realize there is a recess. Let's see if we can loosen this up enough to get it on there. There. I did not realize that that I thought I thought the the dock pushed up against the side of it. I just realized there's a reset in the back of this dock that that goes on. Thank you. Now it is. Now it is. Thanks, Yuri. I did not realize that that was how that went. Oh, and then this needs to be straight. There we are. <laughs> oh. When Thomas tried to share his modifications with the community, he got in trouble. Yeah. That's been how many years ago, though? I'd be curious what Ryan's current thoughts are on that. I don't know. I don't plan on any MPC and C content. I might will continue to make stuff with it, but I don't have to worry about it. Um, 
four and a half hours. I think this is good. I think we're going to call it here. They're just so anybody who's around. I'll see you Wednesday. I'm going to do a stream on Wednesday, so watch out for the for the schedule. I'm off work this week. I decided I'd sneak in a um, an un, unplanned. Well, I mean, a few days planned um, extra stream. So if you're around. I will probably do it at the same time, my the 10 a.m. Um, I I am definitely going to do it at the 10 a.m. time because it's not going to be a super long stream and I don't want to overlap with um, Modbot. So 10 a.m. That'll give us a couple hours. I have something I want to cover. So <laughs> short stream. So anybody who might not be able to see it can see it after. So. Um, so you can't even change the file, but hey, cams cams worked. We had one little thing with the overhead cam. I won't worry about that. And unfortunately, the GoPro was not happy. I don't know if it overheated or what, but it was yelling at me. So Charlie cam wasn't there. Hey, Charlie, you want to come here? Oh, he does. Does we get to close with the Charlie visit? Um, so Wednesday will be a stream. Now next weekend, I'm probably not going to stream. I'm going to OC Maker Fair, and I'm flying back on Sunday, so I I won't be back in time. The only way I would be able to do a stream on Sunday would be to do it a few hours later, which I don't want to do because that gets really late for for many of you. Um, so it unfortunately, it looks like next next weekend will not be a stream, but we'll have a Wednesday stream instead. So. Um, Yeah, so those of you that are in the area that are going to be at OC Maker Fair, um, if you see me, feel free, say hi. Um, I am very much looking forward to um, seeing people and seeing that. Going to my first Maker Fair, I've not been to one. So I am not taking any video at the fair. I, I will be just there. I, I will have my son with me. Um, he actually wants to go, so I'm taking him along and we're gonna just enjoy the the event so i will definitely have some remnants of charlie hair on me because i do all the time it doesn't matter how long away i've been from home or or what there's always a remnant of charlie hair <laughs> so ricky b there's a in orange county california southern california in the la area there is a this is the first annual um, Maker Fair for there, o OC Maker Fair. So, Orange County, yep. So, <laughs> with that, thank you everybody. Um, thanks for those. That, I don't know. Did any of the gift memberships work today? No, we had some people become members. Thank you. Um, thanks for the um, super chats. Thanks for being here. So. Four and a half hours of no major cam glitches. We're good. Hopefully we're on we're on track there and figure out what's going on with the Charlie sleeping cam. For those that you can make it, I'll see you Wednesday. Have a good rest of the day. And those in the US have a good um, Labor Day, Labor Day weekend, Labor Day holiday. Bye.